You feel how you get the, yeah, yeah. the pronation now? There you go. All right, guys, today I'm going to share with you some on-court video footage with me and Nitsan. And I'm just helping him with his forehand as usual, trying to develop that kinetic chain. And we're going to focus on something that I've not actually mentioned before, which is the wrist movement and how to move the racket head quick by using the wrist and actually have that initiate the pronation of the arm as opposed to just trying to rotate the arm and not really moving the racket quick because the wrist isn't moving. So if you look at this first clip here, you'll see that as he swings, the racket and the wrist get, they get laid behind, they get trapped behind. They're not actually rotating through the shot. He doesn't have that last part of the connected chain to move that racket quick. But what I wanted him to think about is how it's that part of the swing, this part of the connected chain with the wrist, that actually initiates the pronation of the elbow. So if you guys are just doing it with the elbow, you're actually gonna have quite a slow shot and not much racket speed. It has to work through the body here, into the arm, into the wrist, and then you get the pronation of the arm. Now, this might not be the same for everyone. I mean, the connected chain is generally the same for everyone. My point is it might not be the advice to you if I was working with you on court. This is my advice for Nitsan, knowing him and working with him for quite a while. But hey, give it a go and let me know if that does help you to generate that racket speed and generate that fluid kinetic chain. I want you to just think when you come in here to snap the wrist. So the end of the, all the kinetic chain happens here. Hips, shoulders, you got the elbow and the forearm, and then snap. Now that turns this, right? rather than this turning the wrist. But Don't think about the elbow turning because- Just the wrist. Right. So it's almost like a slowing down process. Like when you hit a serve, let's say you go Sampras style. It's this, then this. You don't snap this to move this. It's the last bit of the whip, right? And the elbow bends almost to slow the racket, the, the swing down. It's almost like the back end of the kinetic chain, not the front end. Got it. So you've got, you've got this happening, look. You've got the kinetic chain with the, with the arm is important, it's right here. Mm -hmm. And then from here, accelerate the wrist. This is almost a slowing, this is almost a slowing down. So it's a perfect break to slow the body down which means that you can fire into it faster. Because if you know how to slow things down, you can speed it up. If I just snap the elbow, my racket is barely making a noise, right? This tr triggers this. Got it, I think yeah. that's where you've got it a little ass backwards. Jump on All and right. try and, All jump right. on and try and hit a few. A little behind late. you. The thing is, yeah, when you're behind you, you can't, snap the wrist yeah, can you yeah yeah so if you prioritize if you focus on the end of the whip there you go then you'll get the arm pronation instead of thinking about the arm pronation to move the racket that was good that's that was it good. so you got to feel like your hand or your, your racket overtakes your arm or your hand overtakes your arm there you go you feel how you get the, yeah, yeah. the pronation now? There you go. No. Get the racket speed. So it's almost like I want the racket to overtake the arm. Let me just jump on one second. So I want you to feel like the racket and the wrist overtake the arm. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Instead of it being the arm that moves the racket. So when you get here, rotate it. That's kind of overtook the, the arm now, and then it happens instead of the other way around. And the only way to do that is you'll be, you've got to be out in front, right? You're like, you can't do it yeah. if you're jammed. So if you prioritize getting that racket rotating, or the wrist, I should say, there you go. where you get that s snap. 
Nasty. Here we go. Sorry. Here it is. There you go. That was good. It feels clean too. So just embrace the fact that every shot's going to be a little different and use your hands. That's better. Ah, that was heavy. More topspin now. Yeah. Can't do that with the little uh, T-Rex arm. I think that's the main issue, even in practice. Like, I practice against the same players every day, same court. And I feel like I can play great tennis there. Like, when I play my home matches at, at the San Francisco club, I play. I always play well. The second we travel somewhere else, different conditions, different players that hit a bit differently. You've got to learn a swing that's adaptable rather than trying to just learn that one swing that you think is going to work because it. if all those situations you just spoke about require like that shot's different, right? This shot's very different. Yeah, and you, yeah. And you, like my you, last two finishes were the same. Yeah, like, you know, there's times where you got to, you got to whip that ball or, you know, just use your, use your hands. Your backhand works best because you have this ability to maneuver this. Yeah. Forehand's like you're trying to get this so hard that you're just trying to repeat the same swing and it's not the same shot. That was good, you tightened that one up. Good shot. That was good. That's fine to tighten it up, block a few. Just own it. Understand what you're doing with your arm on the racket. You can have some nice push shots if you own it. It's just if you're trying to accelerate and hit a winner and you push it, yeah. now it's rubbish. There you go. Physical education. Exactly. Now guys, I got some big news. This summer, me and Nitsan are gonna be traveling around the country for 10 weeks in my RV. We're gonna be working on his game, making some technical adjustments and trying to get him ready for the pro tour. I think you guys are gonna really enjoy seeing how we reshape Nitsan's forehand and his serve in particular seeing how we can create an overlap from the coaching court to competition so that he can start to execute in tough situations and then go and test it against players all around the country from california to vermont if this sounds interesting to you i want you to go to the description below and click the link that's going to give you access to a lot more of the content that we're going to be producing over the next three months